Today's episode is what separates the winners from the losers, the haves from the have-nots. Today's episode is about remaining process-oriented, and I'll get into exactly what I mean by this on the spy charts in just a moment as we're building our game plan for the remainder of this week. But as always, check out the links listed down below in the description, hit the thumbs up button, and subscribe if you've not already done so, and stay tuned until the end of today's show. I've got two additional trade ideas to share with you that you won't want to miss. Let's kick things off here on the SPY daily time frame chart. What do we see from a trend perspective? Very, very clear that that we're in a strong, strong daily uptrend with consecutive series of higher lows. We've got highs, higher highs, equal highs, big breakout to a brand new higher high on today's session. So the key question to always ask is, can we afford a higher low pullback? The answer to that is 100% yes, without jeopardizing the daily trend. What would the daily line in the sand look like? Probably somewhere around here at 444, the gap fill reversal is 443. The lower bound of the weekly expected move is 443.65. Why is that the key level? Well, what was once resistance, resistance should act as a break retest for support from the top side down in a picture perfect world, and then we will just look for trend continuation. So if we can afford a higher low pullback, is there anything about this chart currently that would suggest a pullback is around the corner? And to me, the answer is also somewhat yes. We do have an indecisive doji in terms of candle structure that printed on today's session. It is happening at a structurally significant zone. Not only is it the upper bound of the weekly expected move. Remember that that's just a suggestion from the options market, by the way. A great example is last week, we went right through it like a hot knife through butter gapped up and over with CPI. But nonetheless, if you look more nuanced at the upper upper wick of today's daily bar. Let me clear that up so you can see there. The upper wick of today's daily bar is technically rejecting prior structure that we had mapped out at 457. So if you pair that with the fact that Tesla and Netflix right now are gapping down big time from their earnings calls, then the one time framing stops here on the daily time frame chart. So let's rewind the script there for just a second. I said one time framing. What is one time framing higher mean in the case of the SPY daily chart? It's whenever you have a series of three or more consecutive bar to bar higher lows on, in this case, it would be the daily time frame chart. It could happen on any time frame, but this is one time framing. Every single daily bar produces a higher low. So if that ends, meaning that we open underneath the prior low of day on tomorrow's session based on the Netflix and Tesla gap down, then the next thing you know, you have trapped overhead supply, indecisive doji, which is clearly a change in tone from the aggressive break that we saw on the Tuesday session with the AI news from Microsoft. So the momentum is slowing down. We're rejecting around prior structure. We know that we're at the upper bound of the expected move, and we have a catalyst from Netflix and Tesla earnings. Is it reasonable that we could get a pullback? Again, if we add all of that together, the answer is 100% yes. Now, even if we don't get a pullback, is it logical that you would want to be a new money long at this higher high? And this is kind of what I meant by separating the winners from the losers. If you remain process oriented, you never really want to be buying the higher high anyhow, right? Where is your risk reward? That's what you always consistently need to be evaluating on any single time frame that you're trading. Where's the risk reward if you're a new money long here? The risk is obviously that we pull back and go to 444. The reward could be, you know, where's our next structure? We don't have anything mapped out. One thing that I would suggest is that there's the potential. This is not a guarantee, but this is just a potential from a sort of measured move perspective is you could come in with a FIB extension, come from here to here to here. And the next thing you know, like a 100% extension gets you closer to 465. But do I think we're going there into the end of this week? The answer is no. So again, the pullback seems very logical and reasonable at this point in time based on what we can see on the daily time frame chart. But I also don't want the bears to get overly aggressive on the downside and declare victory first, right? What does a downtrend require? It requires a series of lower lows and lower highs. And is there anything about this chart that would suggest into the end of this week, at least, that we could get a lower low or a lower high? Well, certainly not a lower high because that would require something that does this into the future. That would require some time, right? There's your daily lower high. But what about a lower low? Well, if the last series of higher lows in the daily trend sequence was all the way down here at 436.75, you're basically betting on an Armageddon black swan event to come in here and take out those lows. So bears, I'll give it to you. If this happens into the end of this week, then kudos, congrats. Definitely this uh, now becomes a threat, lower high underneath this breakout point, right? But it's just, it's so far out of the picture right now that I think the motto here should be caution new money longs. We're looking for either consolidation or pullback up here, and we're going to try to buy pullbacks, right? Until proven otherwise. We'll change our tone when the daily trend changes, but as of right now, there's nothing that would suggest we're about to flip into a daily downtrend. So with all of that out of the way, let's take a look at the hourly time frame chart and build that game plan into the remainder of this week. There's not a lot to talk about psychologically here. It's been just domination by the buyers, right? Straight higher on Monday, 
Wednesday, Tuesday, you get your Microsoft news, right? The next thing you know, uh, we're, we're two points higher out of the SPY. And on today's session, I suppose we could read into this ever so slightly, right? We do have a liquidation break early on in the session. It's a 100% retracement, and we grind lower into the afternoon, retrace it again. So is there any evidence of stronger sellers getting active in the market? The answer is still a resounding no. So are we slowing down up here? Could we have some trapped longs with bad location? The answer is yes, but are there stronger sellers? The answer is no. Now, that is subject to change based on the reactions from Netflix and Tesla earnings. But as of right now, with the daily uptrend and no evidence of stronger sellers entering yet, I'm not convinced that we want to uh, give the bears a victory here if this does turn into a little bit of a pullback into Thursday and Friday. What else could we point out here? Well, if this is going to be a very nuanced micro double top-esque type move, then of course, there's your neckline at 454.50. Any lower highs below, let's just assume that we're going to open on some sort of very slight gap down here. Gap fill reversals or any lower highs tomorrow morning underneath 454.50, you can trade through the near vertical move from Microsoft's AI announcement uh, into 451.50 on your SPY. So that could be some downside available into tomorrow's session. But once again, are you overstaying your welcome at support? The answer is no. Don't be on the wrong side of the trade for too long. In a glaring daily uptrend, you can take stabs at intraday shorts, but do you want to hold those things for a long period of time? Probably not if the daily trend is up. The next level to do the same thing at would be down here at 448.50. And then, of course, your daily line in the sand is down here. Any confluence out of the Fibonacci's or anchored view apps? Let's throw the anchored view apps on first. And lo and behold, almost perfect, right? So from the head of the entire last pullback that we got back there, inverted head and shoulders, we're all on board with that, right? Where is that anchored view app? It's right at the, the daily line in the sand, 444. The next one from the double bottom, remember that this was the double bottom, gapped up and over the neckline, which was ultimately the breakout point from the daily pattern. That anchored view app here is providing confluence of support literally to the penny right now at 448.50. Then the CPI gap up is going to slowly, I would imagine, tomorrow grind higher or stay kind of sideways in here and be confluence right around that 451.50. So anchored view apps act beautifully in this sequence in terms of all the levels that we were just paying attention to. If we come in with the fibs from the CPI gap, uh, your 38.2, again, that's, that's pretty darn close right now to that 451.50. So really watching this as a key zone for a pullback first early on like Thursday uh, and maybe Friday if it's in play that day. Uh, but beyond that, what else do we have? If we come in from here with the fibs, anything from this perspective, your 38.2, once again, very close to this level around that 448.50 zone. It's not precise. Don't get me wrong. We're splitting hairs here. Uh, but in this general zone, right, pullback buys also hold up. And what about from the head? all the way up to the top of this move. Uh, couldn't be so lucky to have the 38.2 there, but the 50% retracement is dead on the money at 444. Once again, this as a zone is incredibly interesting and attractive really from the daily time frame chart. So the last thing I'll leave you with here on the daily time frame, we'll just go back over here, is it seems as though the buyers are overly confident. And I even felt this way myself a little bit on the Tuesday session as the balloon started floating away in the upward direction. I was like, wow, goodness, it's like this market can only go up, right? So you have to check yourself before you wreck yourself. The buyers are getting a little bit overconfident here. The sellers are about to throw in the towel. That's when people get hurt. So again, this video today is going to be what separates the winners from the losers. Don't be on the losing side of the trade. Be patient. Understand that this is not the ideal location for a new money long. We're looking for pullbacks. We're not overstaying our welcome on the short side, but I would love Love to be a pullback buyer in this zone if the right opportunity presents itself at or around the gap close 444 as a general level. Let's take a look at some supporting evidence and see if any of this makes sense. Market internals are always exhibit A. If you're not familiar with this screen, check out the video tutorial in the top right hand corner. Overall, what's going on here? Certainly some significant volumes so far on the week. Remember that 500 million is what we need to breach for it to be substantial. And we're almost there at 452 on the Wednesday session. It's more substantial than what we got as of last Wednesday's read. This was Wednesday into the close, slightly below. So volume flows are substantial. But if we take a look at what's going on with the advanced decline line, this week has really been a struggle with opens that are less than ideal trying to rally as we move higher. And even on today's session, as we're consolidating and going sideways, notice that we drift lower here. So it's not an outright bearish call, obviously, you know, all of this acceptance is over the zero line, but it's certainly not nearly as strong as what we saw last week with the gap and goes from CPI and PPI with the advanced decline line up here in trend higher zone. Similar things can be said about the cumulative ticks down below. They're definitely bullish. They're not bearish, but they're not nearly as strong as what we were getting last week when exchange wide, we were seeing rallies, you know, almost everywhere, right? This is really noteworthy on the Tuesday session where the market goes near vertical. Let me zoom in on that for us. You know, markets near vertical on the Microsoft AI news. What does the cumulative tick do? 
it builds a little bit, but it's kind of flat and then gets a little bit better into the close. So it just goes to illustrate the concentration so far based on Microsoft dragging the S&P higher. So what I've been saying recently is, hey, when the music stops, make sure you have a seat at the table. So everything about the internals dashboard right here would kind of align nicely with the fact that we should not be fishing for new money longs with momentum dying. And there could be some sort of pullback that starts to develop. These things are diminishing. They're getting slightly weaker, but they're not bearish yet. We should not be looking for an outright top to form until we flip into a daily downtrend and have internals that suggest more serious sell side pressure. Market profile is always exhibit B. If you're not familiar with this screen, check out the video tutorial in the top right hand corner. Overall, this is a great job of illustrating what's been going on with value and why there is increased pullback risk into the end of this week. It really starts, the story starts way back here Thursday of last week. We know that we produced a spike and ever since then, value was actually accepting inside of the spike prices, getting higher price acceptance, right? On the Monday session, we go value areas overlapping to slightly up. Point of control does migrate higher with price. Tuesday's AI mania breakout value areas clearly break away in the upward direction point of control is also higher with price. And on today's session, we could say the same exact thing. Value area is higher point of control is higher as well. So you're thinking to yourself, okay, we're accepting these higher prices, right? Well, not so fast. Remember the concept of one time framing on the SPY daily time frame chart. As we were opening above every single prior low, there was no threat of the value really turning into overhead supply where people were committing lots of volume. On tomorrow's open, as long as this gap down holds from Netflix and Tesla earnings, it's very likely that this will turn into overhead supply. You've got trapped longs up here at the top. So that's the difference in terms of psychology and the possibility of it flipping from price acceptance higher to now all of a sudden, okay, pullback risk has actually increased because what are the buyers going to do who are trapped? If we do rally to close the gap, the first people who want out for break even will sell at the prior low of day, right? If anyone nailed the low of day today, which could have been likely given that we saw liquidation break right into it twice, right? If anyone wants out for break even at 45.90, they turn into sellers and there, you know, there's your gap fill reversal. Pullback continues, right? So what would some pullback levels be out of the ES? Well, the equivalent of your 451.50 would be in here, which is actually a mechanical level. Your prior high, is also value area low, and that's right around 4567 out of the ES. 4567, the next one, the equivalent to 44850 on the SPY, would be down somewhere in here closer to 425 on your ES futures. It would be irresponsible of me to not also acknowledge that we do have a poor high on today's session. There's only one tick of excess up here. We did report this pair high. Uh, it doesn't mean that we have to fix this tomorrow, the next day, or even the day after that. It's a level to carry forward, but given the dynamic that we just focused on, this is the main takeaway from market profile. This value could easily turn into overhead supply, furthering the chances of a pullback. Jumping back on over to the platform to evaluate the weekly performance of our sectors shows us that leading the pack is none other than the XLF financials up 2.66%. What a thing of beauty. It's basically retraced all of the SVV breakdown that we saw from the past. XLK follows it up. So two heavyweight risk on sectors. Uh, XLK tech is up 1.98%, call it 2%. It's probably going to be down obviously tomorrow, but nonetheless, so far leading the rally, Posture is impressive. Now, we do have energy mixed in here, but just underneath we have discretionary and then industrials at the bottom of the barrel. We're seeing utilities, real estate, and then communications is also lagging a bit here. So overall, posture as this move higher has unfolded does strike me as being more healthy as opposed to bearish or divergent from what should be taking place. Checking in on structure, once again, XLF, totally a retracement of the SVB breakdown. Is this you know a reasonable place for the market to cool off and find a bit of a pullback? Absolutely. Is there an opportunity opportunity for a daily higher low. You bet. You bet your bottom dollar there is, right? Where would the daily higher low want to go? Anywhere north of 3420s at this point in time. So not really seeing a whole lot of threat here out of the XLF. I mean, this perhaps in the grand scheme of things, if it's a major lower high, will be concerned, but the daily trend is still up. It is not flipped to down. Let's take a look at the XLK. Brand new all-time highs, obviously, with the Microsoft news. Is there an opportunity for a higher low here to do something like this? The music continues. Yes. And even if it doesn't continue, you can still get a daily higher low underneath the prior all-time high. Your risk then would be a lower high back down underneath. Then you would look at this as sort of a head and shoulders, one step at a time, right? One step at a time, 175.85 and then 173.35 are the two top watches into the end of this week. Next up, we've got the energy sector. Any concerns from a leadership perspective, even though it's at the top of the list? 
Not really, right? Not really whatsoever. Nowhere close to all-time highs. Still struggling in this overall range. You could call this a look above and fail. Two upper wicks, both rejecting the 83 retest. If we just chop around in here, no big threats out of energy in my eyes. XLY, same idea as the XLK, right? New high was just made. Granted, we've got an in, uh, inverted hammer. Could it pull back? Yes. Can we find a higher low over 174.30? Yes. Could we go gap fill reversal and also get a higher low from here to here? answer is still yes. So once again, there's no real reason yet to be flipping overly bearish broad market wise. Uh, but could we see some pullback into the end of this week? Based on what I'm seeing in the charts, the answer is yet again, yes. So not bearish, but pullback could be here. Uh, XLI equal high. We are home basically at that 109 expected move from the range breakout, right? If we were looking for a range double, there it was. So again, could this cool off? Could it go sideways? Yes. Not overly concerned with this one. Inside bar setup, basically, uh, this actually looks like it may you know, if there's going to be a move higher tomorrow, maybe industrials is the name to do it, right? If we can break that doji high, you got three equal highs here. Just an interesting setup to be watching XLI or any industrial related stocks. XLV healthcare, once again, second heaviest weighted stock by market cap, but D for defensive in terms of posture. Any threats with it falling off of a cliff? Now, we talked about this as we were headed into this week. The fact that we were back above 130.25 was healthy. Is it exhibiting leadership up and over here? No. Is there an inverted hammer on today's session? Yes. If we take out the low and we just chop around in this range, leadership wise, here, good to go. Second heaviest weighted sector, not falling off of a cliff, good to go, right? So, not really seeing any threats. Could it produce pullback once again? Downward pressure into the end of this week, perhaps. Let's take a look at the XLP. Consumer staples, definitely more D for defensive. Any leadership issues? Once again, the answer is no. As the market's been breaking out, it's still stuck in its overall sideways range. We'll keep an eye on it up and over 75. But even then, I mean, you're not making big strides at higher highs out of the XLP. So not a big threat there either. Uh, XLB, materials, lightweight sector, really just a consolidation range up there, not telling us a lot about the market. XLC for communications. It's struggled on the week thus far. Uh, but again, anything about this trend overly concerning in here? Uh, to me, the answer is no. Could this be a micro double top? It could be, but remember, you must break that neckline for it to turn into a double top. And even at that, you can get a daily higher low here at the 65.55. So end of week pullback, yes. Overall bearish, no. XLU, any leadership? Absolutely not. Moving along real estate, anything crazy out of this light weight sector? Again, the answer is no. Even like even still, upward pressure is upward pressure. I could kind of imagine as the S&P potentially pulls back with this Netflix Tesla kind of thing that's unfolding right now, if we see some rotation going on, remember that that's healthy for the market. Uh, you know, if utilities, energy, uh, consumer staples can kind of pick up the slack as financials, tech, discretionary, and communications pull back, there's nothing wrong with that, right? That's technically healthy market rotation. Here's the sector ratio grid. If you're not familiar with this screen, check out the video tutorial in the top right-hand corner on how to set this one up. Overall, the heaviest weight risk on sector is the XLK, and it looks fantastic, producing a brand new nuanced but higher high with Microsoft on the Tuesday session. Higher low pullbacks want to remain above the upward sloping 50 SMA, so that is a risk on indication, obviously. XLV, it's moving lower, but it is a D4 defensive sector. In terms of the XLF, starting to become constructive on the inverted head and shoulders with the higher low that was produced here. We want to spend more time above the 50 SMA, ultimately flattening it out and then making it start to trend in the upward direction would be the best look and outcome for the XLF watching that closely to see if banks can really follow through. XLY, this is going to take a little bit of a hit if Tesla earnings do result in a solid gap down for tomorrow's open. Are we in jeopardy of changing the XLY ratio trend though? The answer is no. Clearly an opportunity for a higher low above the upward sloping 50 SMA. Closest tie to risk on posture, which is outside of the heavier weight sectors is the XLC. Netflix, same idea. If the gap down does remain true, then obviously there's a threat for the XLC ratio to do something like this. And more of a threat would just be the fact that the gap down could move uh, the ratio underneath the 50 SMA. So watching that closely, this might be the first one to go from more of like a, hey, healthy kind of risk on look to, okay, not so much if the XLC ratio moves aggressively lower tomorrow. Structurally, we know that the daily time frame chart can afford a higher low pullback on the daily. If we take a look at risk off sectors, any threats here? No. Any threats here? No. Any threats here? Not really. I would say that this higher high, it's not it's not the end of the world. It's something to start keeping an eye on, but overall, no threats from the risk off sectors starting to dominate uh, what's going on in the market. Let's take a look at the XLK. So tech sector versus utility sector. Anything about this looks risk off. The answer is no. This does support the move that we saw on Tuesday, more of a risk on indication for markets. And if we take a look at what's going on with the XLY over XLP, same idea, uh, risk on in terms of discretionary versus consumer staples. So still, even if we do get a pullback, many of these ratios can afford a higher level low and keep us on the risk on side of the market.
What's going on with the dollar? You can certainly see the opportunity here for a big time daily lower high underneath the prior overhead range now at 101. That would certainly speak to bullish odds down below in equities. The threat for larger downside in equities would be if the dollar makes a knee jerk recapture of 101 goes higher low back in range. Now all of a sudden we're dealing with look below and fail. The target over time would be 105.65. That of course would put more downside pressure on equities here. So we'll keep an open mind to that, but nothing about the chart currently would suggest that that's a major threat into the end of this week. And if we take a look at gold as well, it's certainly confirming that once again, this is not really a big time threat into the end of this week with the bull flag break that happened in here. Good to go. This is confirming what we just saw out of the dollar. Let's take a look at interest rates. What's going on with the T TNX, certainly the opportunity for a head and shoulders to emerge now that we certainly have a rotation back down underneath 38.20, lower high, equal low flush back down through 36.40, and we'll look for something that does that. Of course, the implication there would be bullish for tech, not great for financials because we know that a lot of the earnings were driven from the higher rate environment. We just saw that in lots of those uh, bank earnings reports. Let's take a look at the ZT inverted to get a sense for what the two year is doing. Then we'll look at Fed tracker expectations. This is lower. Remember that we did want to see a lower high in here to basically negate the second rate hike come November. And that's really what we're seeing. So with this playing nicely, let's take a look at the tracker tool and see what's going on. So we're basically locked and loaded for the 25 basis point rate hike next Wednesday, bringing the terminal rate up to 525 to 550. And the big deal was really the battle between one versus two rate hikes into the end of this year. And last Friday, we got inflation expectations and consumer sentiment that really bumped up the odds of a second rate hike for November. If we look at that tab now, the rate hike has essentially evaporated, and now we're pretty confident once again, getting more confident as time passes here, that we'll only be getting one and done into the end of this year, which basically also makes sense, I would say, with the rally that we've seen, right? Wouldn't it be more bullish to only get one hike versus two into the end of this year? And the Fed tracker tool is certainly suggesting that, hey, that path kind of makes sense as well. So more of risk on probability from a Fed rate hike perspective. If we take a look at the economic data this week, there's really been nothing uh, that's come out, which is like a blockbuster. Retail sales was fine. It was off the expectation, but still mildly positive. So people aren't really, you know, dramatically cutting back just yet. Unemployment claims will come out tomorrow morning at 830. And then of course, next week is the fireworks week with the FOMC coming on Wednesday, 2 p.m. and 2.30 press conference to follow from Jerome Powell. In terms of what's really the focus of the market right now, I would say it's going to be on earnings here. ASML reported before the bell and they posted a 38% rise in profits, but did cite some uh, sort of restrictions from China uh, on the import export side of things that could pose a threat. This is really going to set the stage for what takes place out of Nvidia, which will be market moving. That's really uh, the, the main focus of this earnings cycle at the end of August. Into the remainder of this week, we know that we're also getting tomorrow before the open TSMC on the weekend video. We'll probably do a deeper dive into the Tesla and Netflix earnings reports just to see if there's any commentary that's there. Uh, but as of right now, we'll just treat those as gappers for tomorrow's session. So Earnings on the horizon, tech stuff, mainly around chips and semiconductors, AI, that's the focus of the market. I don't really think the whole rate hike thing is a big issue uh, for the market to digest at this point in time, given what we've just seen with the give back in the November meeting, basically suggesting, hey, we're good. One hike, and then we'll sort of stay steady into the end of this year, then we'll start cutting into 2024. As you would expect, all of the risk appetite indications look incredibly strong for equities down below. So TLT making new lows on that relationship that's there. If we take a look at shorter dated bonds, making a move in the downward direction, move in the downward direction. So not really threatening of a recessionary type environment, especially after retail sales, that does strike me as noteworthy. If we take a look at the HYG, this did kind of what we want wanted it to do, which was produce the higher low. But you'll note that we do have technically a lower high in development here. So a little bit of a bearish divergence from that perspective, once again, plays nicely with the whole pullback theory that we've been discussing so far in today's episode of the midweek market update. Let's take a brief look at Bitcoin. Let's drop it down to a daily time frame chart. We'll go with like three months. What I want to point out here is that as we came down aggressively into these lows, even broke those lows, there was no follow through in the downward direction. So once again, overall risk appetite in financial markets right now is pretty strong. There's no outright bearishness. There's no nothing. So once again, mild pullback, not bearish until we really flip into stronger downtrends. Market breadth continues to improve as this rally has unfolded. So new highs versus lows making a new weekly impression up and away from the zero line. If we take a look at the SPX A200 
are stocks trading above the 200 SMA in the S&P 500. New higher high on the weekly impression as well. That is a bullish takeaway. And we can also look at the SPX A50R getting and sort of staying towards that 80% mark, which is a bullish indication in the long term, right? If we take a look at a weekly time frame chart here, and we'll just grab a couple more years worth of price data. Under normal and bullish market environments, you typically spend some time around that 80% mark, right? You don't, it's not always just an overbought contrarian indication. You can spend some serious time there. And just remember that this is not one-to-one -one paired with what we have down below any, anymore, right? This is a five-year weekly chart up top. So that is that. I would not be, uh, you know, looking to fade just because of that. But obviously, we know we can deal with a pullback on the daily chart. RSP looks interesting to me just because it did produce a higher high. But on today's session, not yesterday when Microsoft was ripping and roaring in the upward direction. So speaking of the broadening nature of the rally, the fact that the RSP saw follow through on today's session does strike me as a healthy and bullish indication and perhaps the best for last in terms of, uh, you know, overall market breadth. Look at the industrials. Let me zoom in on this so we can actually bask in its glory for just a moment here together. It broke the level, right? It finally broke out up and over that 34,590 level. Obviously, you want to see in a picture perfect world, higher lows above that. But as long as higher lows are really anywhere above this level at 33, what is the number? Let me get that for you. 33,650. As long as we're above 33,650, producing a higher low that could look something like this, still good to go because obviously we know transports are running away like a freight train, no pun intended, in the upward direction here. So liking the fact that overall breadth remains steady and on the bull side of the market. VIX volatility is low and slow. No issue from that. And if we take a look behind the curtain one more time at the VIX, as we discussed on the Saturday update, even though this is higher in the overall range, it's better that way because if we're sitting down here on complacency lower zone, next thing you know, it's just a slight uptick in volatility and all of a sudden, you know what hits the fan. So if we do pull back, I'll be keeping a very close eye on the VIX. Does it breach 103 and can we start getting some sort of parabolic move over 103? Or if the SPY respectfully pulls back and the VIX is just mildly running into 103 from the bottom side and does something like this into the future, that would be a pretty darn bullish indication that that pullback would be viable in the S&P equities. Let's take a look at the VIX futures to see if we're dealing with Contango. The answer is yes. This has been updated to the new contract. So Q versus U up here, stronger Contango, pretty much flat. Uh, nine versus 30 day VIX is coming into the zero line, but it's certainly not breaching it aggressively for a sort of backwardation type move. And one day VIX is also suppressed. We'll keep an eye on this if a deeper and harsher pullback does unfold, but so far so good. Volatility is comfortable for a bullish market. QQQ daily time frame chart is very similar to the SPY, obviously, certainly dealing with a strong daily uptrend, consecutive sets of higher lows, as well as sitting on a brand new higher high. So we know that we can afford to pull back the higher low zone wants to be around three 72.75 as a daily line in the sand coming from your prior pivot top from back here here and we broke out through it with CPI and PPI. You've got a number of different levels obviously on the pullback side of things but before we go there is it reasonable that the market could pull back? Well, number 1 yes with Netflix and Tesla, but also look at the daily bar red bodied indecisive doji upper edge of the weekly expected move as well as prior structure at 388.75. Let's go to the hourly now and make some more sense of all of these levels. First and foremost on today's session notice that the upper bound of the weekly expected move is also structure, right? Into the end of day, we did get a lower high underneath. We could round this down to 386.25. And it's very likely, obviously, with Netflix and Tesla that we're going to be opening underneath these levels as well. Uh, the current traded price is 383.60 by 61. So we're trading right around in here just north of the single prints, which we'll get to in just a moment. If the market rallies first tomorrow, the idea should be for a lower high underneath 386.25. Then we can trade for some downside outcomes. All eyes will be on the closure and rotation through the single prints at 382. You better bet your bottom dollar if the market sees a reversal off of 382 in the upward direction. It's such a nuanced level that it has to be bullish. Why does it have to be bullish? Because if stronger sellers were getting involved, they're not going to care about the closure of single prints, the top of the opening range from Tuesday, and the prior pivot top from here. Stronger sellers don't act that way. Stronger sellers sell, and they just sell, 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 sell until their orders are filled, and the market goes wherever the market is going to go. If we see a rebound off of 382 after something that does look like this, you again, you better believe stronger sellers are not active in the market, and short-term buyers are probably lifting prices back up to test the equal high, or at least allow the opportunity to exit at break-even in this general zone uh, from today's session. So that's the first and foremost 
closed at 382. After that, you can walk it down at 378.50. Gap closes between 375.65 down to 374.20. There's your daily line in the sand at 372.75. Same concepts. We are looking to buy higher lows. We are in an overall daily uptrend. Stronger sellers are simply not here yet. I would be keeping a very close eye on 382. If we throw on the anchored view apps, any confluence with the levels here. Uh, so once again, we understand where these are coming from. We've got our head. We've got our right portion of the double bottom and the CPI gap up. This one's kind of a no man's land. This will likely be at confluence with 378.50 on tomorrow's session. And the head anchored view app is at the daily line in the sand at 372.75. So all good from that perspective. This is probably going to be too slow to catch up to 382 tomorrow morning, at least early on in the day. So not putting a lot of emphasis on the CPI anchored view app. Let's take a look at the market internals out of the NASDAQ side of things specifically. Decent inflows on the week 483 thus far. We know that we're looking for 600 on the week as a total. So right there, scratching at significant inflows. Uh, but once again, no individual day was up here around 400 million. Same thing with the advanced decliner out of the S&P. Obviously, really mild reads and fading on today's session. No day this week has spent any time even close to trend higher zone, which is saying a lot considering the move from Microsoft on uh, the... Um, on the Tuesday session, right? Again, it speaks to concentration there. The same thing could be said about the cumulative ticks. You might be like, hey, where's where's Wednesday's cumulative build? It's dead flat. It is dead flat on today's session. So is there a bit of a change in tone? Is it possible that we start to see some pullback here? Certainly seems reasonable, but we're not outright bearish. There aren't stronger sellers yet entering this market based on what I can see. Let's take a look at the market profile, then we'll wrap up the NQ here. So we could talk about the single prints because that's the main takeaway from the market profile out of the NQ side of things. We do have a double district distribution so far we are accepting in distribution one so once again if stronger sellers were going to get involved the retracement will likely take us into distribution two which is down here if not further right so if we're above the top of single prints then great that's even more bullish than a reversal off of this that should be noted as well and you're also getting again there's your nuance if you talk about prior highs value error, excuse me, uh, single print top in there, that level out of your NQ futures, I'll give you the number right now is at 15,868, 15,868, the singles close here, a little bit lower at 15,822, and the nuance out of the NQ, it's a little bit different out of the QQQ side of things, but in the NQ futures, your single print closure is the value area high from the Monday session, which is noteworthy here, and once again, makes it a mechanical level, even though it's not perfectly paired with the prior tops, like what we see out of the cash ETF. QQQ. So that's the NASDAQ. Let's take a look at the rut. IWM Russell 2000 and the small caps rusty, as we've been calling it recently. It has gone for the full range double and that breakout has been complete in terms of a measured move. And we're also rejecting ever so slightly underneath prior structure at 198.50. We know that we're in a strong daily uptrend. We know that we're extended through the upper bound of the expected move. We know that we've just hit a target. We know that we're sitting on a higher high. Can we afford the daily pullback? The answer is yes, and we can look for two places to produce a higher low. First and foremost, you wanna see the top of this four-day range in here provide a higher low, that's 193.50, and then your daily line in the sand is at 188.25. Let's take a look at the hourly time frame chart. You can clearly see, uh, you know, this move has been quite strong in the upward direction. There's been some whipsaws back and forth in here specifically, but this is notably strong into the close, and I'll show you why in the internals in just a moment. Like, I'm convinced that this may have been been short squeeze on the Monday session, but Tuesday's breakout is definitely more, more so not just short squeeze. And again, we'll see that in the internals in just a moment. So what's the path going forward? If this is going to turn into a nuanced double top, you got to get underneath that neckline, aka today's low of day at 196 with a lower high. And then you'll target the retest of 193.50, the breakout point from the Tuesday morning rally. If we can get a daily higher low there, fantastic, really, really good looking chart uh, from a daily perspective, even an hourly uptrend perspective here. If we fail there, there, I would be cautious of this full retracement into 188.25 over time. Do the anchored view apps agree with that sort of path? Let's take a look. And if we put on the IWM specific ones, so low breakout day from here, and then obviously your CPI, uh, this would sort of confirm, right? So overall, so this is already at confluence, 193.50. This is slowly going to get there, right? If we just go sideways and do nothing for the end of this week, and then maybe FOMC causes some volatility, we spike lower. If that's going to be there maybe like next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that's when the FOMC is anyways, right? That could potentially be in play. That's really, really speculative. So don't bank on that. Just sort of like thinking about how that may unfold. Uh, and then this over time is in no man's land as well. Maybe gets to confluence here. Wouldn't be banking on that one either. So 193.50 with this VWAP is really the main focus into 
into the end of this week to see if we can produce a higher low. Let's take out the Fibonacci's from the lows up to the top here. Uh, what you'll notice is your 38.2 respects the bottom end of this range. That's not really ideal uh, because of what unfolded on Tuesday and the strong push up and out of that range after the higher low already here. Right, there's your higher low. We push away from that. So you really don't want to get back down underneath 193.50. Uh, the 38.2 technically is here, but if we do see like this type of rotation, I would be thinking for deeper pullbacks at 188.25. So not thrilled with the way that the uh, Fibonacci's are playing with our levels on the chart there. Uh, let's take a look at the internals for the Russell side of things. And you can see that the volume flows are substantial here. Advanced decliner does not make it into trend higher zone out of the rut. And this is what I was talking about with the Tuesday afternoon session being a little bit more than just short squeeze right after the higher low. The reason I could more confidently say that is just because of what took place into the afternoon out of the cumulative build. So across the exchange on the Russell, right, things were getting bought up exchange wide. Uh, short squeeze in the morning, yes, but really decent move into the close. Really, when we see a short squeeze, the cumulative tick tends to look something like this. Big rally out of the open, and then it fades into the close. You can see that we did not rally on the open and instead got a little bit of an uptick into the close there on Tuesday. So once again, it's not an end-all be-all, you know, Russell's going on new all-time highs. It just speaks to the idea that uh, buyers are certainly stronger than sellers at this point in time. And it's not just short squeeze that we saw on Tuesday's session. What about the market profile for the Russell side of things? Nothing really impressive over here. This is just a great illustration of volatility. If you want to think of this as a P-shaped profile, it's always short squeeze. B-shaped profile is long liquidation. P-shaped profile, short squeeze. P-shaped profile, short squeeze. But once again, with the internals paired into Tuesday's afternoon session, maybe not just short squeeze, maybe a little bit better than that. And you can see in the post-market, obviously, without the impact of the... Um, Netflix and Tesla earnings, this is kind of just hanging out sideways in range. So not really a threat of overhead supply weighing too heavily in the downward direction. If we take out the low, of course, we'll trade for those downside outcomes. We have single prints to be thinking about here, but different clearly than what we have out of the S&P and QQQ. Apple kicks off the core list of companies and even Apple could not resist the AI mania virus, right? You can see it transmute into the price action here. We get a big pop in the upward direction and almost all of it was given back, not quite all of it, but most of it. Uh, most interestingly out of Apple, we were getting into the afternoon session a hold of your prior resistance, resistance and resistance from back here at 194.15. So buyers were doing something interesting, but as of right now with the earnings nonsense out of Netflix, Netflix and Tesla, we're trading 193.73 by 81 in the post market, which puts us back down in this choppy range here. So any longs who went out long into the close looking to swing trade Apple are going to wake up massively disappointed. And the threat is really for a lower high underneath this as a range 192.50 to close the gap underneath us at 191. That would be my top watch for tomorrow out of Apple. Even if we do get higher lows back above 194.15, this is pretty menacing to trade into as a new money long right? Obviously the sellers had something going on or it was just a quick rug pull pump and dump type thing in that upper wick of Apple. So not thrilled about upside, even if we do have the higher low over that level. Here's Netflix. Let's take a look at the after hours. This is going to be a P for patience play for me, at least uh, you're going to get too much push and pull here. Obviously new money shorts are going to jump all over this thing, but you're also going to have buyers who are like, wow, I missed this rally back here on Tuesday. Let me try again and buy it in this range, uh, which we're currently trading in the midpoint of gap rules will be in play, but I personally will be staying away. I'll probably be a day two trader out of Netflix. And the same thing could be said about Tesla, right? Tesla still certainly moving in the downward direction. Uh, anybody who is a breakout buyer up and over this level here, massively hurt, massively disappointed, doesn't mean that it has to fall off of a cliff because you're also going to get the opposite side of that coin, the pullback buyers who are like, great, this is an opportunity to go long on Tesla. So gap rules will be in play. Just understand that this as a resistance point will be quite noteworthy. Uh, let's just turn that back on or off, I should say. We're opening basically right around in here, right? The threat is that you go lower high there, uh, certainly keeps us back down underneath that breakout point, which would be a bearish indication overall on the higher time frame. So we'll take those in stride. Again, I'll be a day two trader out of those, not really looking to get aggressive um, on tomorrow's session, Netflix or Tesla. Google, what do we see here? Bears are making a stand once again, rotating through the thin structure back here with the lower high underneath 125, the flush of 123 and consolidation into the close. So 120 is the target over time. We're mildly lower in the post market after the announcement from Netflix and Tesla, not as impacted here, 121.89 by 9.00. 
95, but still looking for this over time, 120 out of Google when and if we get here, there's an opportunity for a daily higher low. Google is really much more neutral than anything. Here's the daily chart. Is this a trending market or a neutral market? Well, in this box, it's quite literally sideways, not a trending market. Here's Metaverse. What's going on with Zuckerberg's fantasy land? This is the daily time frame chart. Let's go back to the hourly to make sense of kind of what's going on over here. Currently trading at 312 in the post market. So right around in here, not as impacted by earnings. So healthy consolidation builds out a set of hourly higher lows and follow through is once again up and over 317. We know that the larger overhead target is 327.25. Next up is Nivda. If this is going to turn into a double top, just to sort of address it before it even comes up, it's got to break the neckline. We're currently not close. 465 in the post market after earnings from everybody else, which is really just back down over here. Uh, if this puts in cup and handle, that kind of looks interesting for a move in the upward direction, watching over 479 for blue sky territories, because you have multiple instances of touching this area. I would have to imagine that there might be more of a breakout style trade that could unfold there. Whereas back here, it was just wild whipsaws back and forth. There wasn't much going on. This, now that we have some structure to trade off of, is looking a little bit better out of NVIDIA. So watching higher lows over 460 breakout over 479. If we go lower high in here, we could target the neckline, we could target the gap. But once again, the stronger downside reversals are only once we actually break this on the daily time frame chart, right? If we just go there, you can kind of see this. There's your pseudo double top. You would have to produce like this and then a daily lower high, just like we talked about in the spy kind of applies there out of NVIDIA. Next up, Softy. Uh, here's that mania move from Tuesday and today pulling back and respecting these prior highs in the post market. We're still above it as well. 353.30 in the post. So let's go on down to the hourly time frame chart. A lot of it was given back, but the key watch tomorrow and into the end of the week is to determine if 351 is going to act as support. So I personally am thinking about hammers here. I'm thinking about double bottoms. I'm thinking about inverted head and shoulders. You know, the whole nine yards at 351. So that's the key level into tomorrow and Friday session. If we're above it, there's no reason to be overly aggressive on the short side now that the pullback has unfolded. We've retraced the thin structure breakout. If we hold here, it's looking pretty good for a daily higher low and a break and retest of your prior structural resistance in here. The threat for larger downside out of Microsoft comes when and if we fail to hold on to this level right here at 342.25. It's where multiple instances of little longs unfolded. Obviously, this one led to the breakout, but if this happens, that's the worst downside, right? That's not really a threat currently, given how the chart looks. Let's take a look at Amazon, last but not least, the mini beast, then two trade ideas, and I'll send you on your way. What's going on with Amazon? Post market is 134.45 by 75. So right around in here, uh, give or take, not really all that impacted by Netflix or Tesla. I would be watching for the resolution of 134, uh, 134.40. There we are. If we can go high or low, great. Looking for upside outcomes into the 136 on tomorrow's session. So opens that are in here, pull back first. That does something like this is attractive or the patience play is break and retest higher low over 136.75. Next overhead target is 140.50. Lots of room to run there. The bears only have something going on if they can go lower high underneath 132.70. Why? Because there it is on Tuesday, right? There's your opportunity for the bears to produce at least lower high and keep prices underneath. This as a head and shoulders did not happen. So bears, you got to do something more. You got to do more damage if Amazon is going to fall. So that's the core list. Let's get into these ideas. If you've made it to this point in the video, I want to reward your dedication by revealing the launch date for our card holders. It's going to be on Friday, this Friday at noon Eastern time, Friday at noon Eastern time, mark your calendars, turn on notifications. What I'm going to do is I'm going to post the link without tagging anybody in the 50 K YouTube merch section of the discord. And then if they're not sold out by the time, I don't know, 5 PM Eastern on Friday comes around, then I'll post the link publicly over on Twitter, as well as tag folks in the discord. That way, everybody who wants one has an opportunity to at least look for them. And remember only 50 of them were produced for 50,000 subscribers. So if you've made it to this point, you now have the secret time frame in which these will be released. So you can throw people off down below in the comments section. You can leave wrong comments down below. You can leave the right comments down below. I don't care what you do in the comments down below, but that is the game plan for the 50K card holder release. All right. So on Discord first in the 50K YouTube merch room, it's going to be a non notified post 12 noon on Friday, this Friday, Eastern time. All right. After that, at 5 p.m., if they haven't sold out, I'll post the link publicly over on Twitter. And I will also tag folks in Discord to make sure they all go again with 50 of them. 
I don't really expect that to be an issue. Anyways, here are the two trade ideas and then you are on your way. TTD, the trade desk is up first. Notice that we have ourselves a lower high. This is an hourly chart, by the way, hourly time frame chart lower high on today's session inside of an overall balance range. If we break it down, if the broad market is pulling back, we have a thin structure breakout that could potentially be retraced. Now we do have to contend with the possibility for gap fill reversal. So aggressive traders are looking at 8650s to break down. More conservative traders wanna see price acceptance underneath 85 even, and the target would be from back here where the breakout really stemmed from up and over 7885. So that would be your downside target. And this is best if the broad market itself is also pulling back. Last but certainly not least for today's ideas is WMT for Walmart. This is still an hourly time frame chart. Hopefully you can start to envision how this turns into head and shoulders. You've got a very clear neckline. You've got very thin structure as the rotation higher unfolded. Under 153.50 closes that thin structure down to 151. And with that, folks, that is going to wrap up today's episode of the Midnight Special the midweek market update. I hope you enjoyed it. If you learned something new or just enjoyed the video, let me know down below in the comment section or by giving the video a simple thumbs up. And with that said, I hope to see you all in the pre-market prep tomorrow morning at 8.15, as well as on Friday at 8.15. Keep in mind the secret release date, Friday noon in the Discord. We put up that little screenshot of the room it will be posted in. Keep your eyes peeled for that. And with that said, have a green trading week.